Hi booktube! My name is Sarah and welcome to The Bookish Knitter. Today I am coming to you with a Harlequin Anticipated Reads video and this is for uh, March of 2023. So apologies up front if you can see the glare in my glasses of the ring light. It's later in the evening uh, than I would usually film videos so I need the ring light because it is dark out already but I wanted to get this video filmed so I could get it posted for tomorrow. It is Tuesday night that I'm filming this. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> I am filming this on Valentine's Day. Hence the heart earrings and the pink shirt and I am wearing um, socks with hearts on them as well just because. Um, I know it's a Hallmark holiday but it's still fun. Anyway back to the video. So I have not done one of these uh, Harlequin Anticipated Raids videos in quite some time. Um, I used to do them almost every month and essentially what I do is I go through all of the books that are coming out um, from Harlequin in the category romance lines and the different lines that they put out and I um, pick my favorite one from each uh, imprint and or line or whatever you want to call them and that is my kind of pick for the month, my top book from each line for the month. So personally what I've been doing is that I have that list and then I throughout the month uh, through January and February I will randomly pick a book every week to read from that um, from that list. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm sharing with you guys ahead of time the books that I have picked for March. So what's this, what this means is when I'm doing my weekly uh, TBRs in March when I pick my Harlequin anticipated read it will be from this list one of the books will be from this list. So I'm going to go through, there's 11 titles right now because there's 11 different imprints or lines within Harlequin and I'm going to kind of read the little quick back bit of each of these just to share them with you guys and I will leave the full list below of all of the books. Um, and yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy this. So first of all, we're going to start with the Desire line and we have Big Easy Secrets by Kira Sinclair. I love the cover of this one. Just that shot of them on the boat is just amazing. And Big Easy, that's a New Orleans reference. I am a, uh, there's a few buzzwords that we all have. And for me, a couple of the buzzword locations are New Orleans and Alaska, but this one is New Orleans. So this is book number six in the Bad Billionaires series. So it says Jameson, uh, Jameson Nelly, AKA the Joker, is one of the best computer hackers in the world. Kinley Sullivan is too. Working alone has always been his MO, but teaming up with his boss's sister alone on the water in his yacht is the only way to catch a notorious thief. Kin Kinley's uh, got a reckless streak and a guilty past, and the passion she evokes is more dangerous than any criminal. The Joker's heart has always been a fortress. Will loving Kinley redeem them both, or will the joke be on him? love that they're hackers. I love it. Just so big, easy. It might now that I'm reading it like again, cause I read it originally, of course. Uh, but maybe it doesn't mean New Orleans. Maybe it just means like an easy target or something like that. I'm excited about reading it. Um, the next one we have is a heartwarming novel. We have her surprise hometown match by Tara uh, Randell. This is book number four in the, uh, the golden matchmaking club series. So it says Juliet Bishop is living a lie and she won't let any man get close enough to discover she's not the hero golden residents imagine. But rebellious former rodeo cowboy Ty Pendergrass, very similar to Ty Pennington with the P anyway, we're not the, anyone else watch Trading Spaces specifically for Ty back in the day? <laughs> I love that show. Um, uh, Ty Pendergrass slips under her radar and straight into her heart. No stranger to the struggle of shedding a reputation, the daring trick rider could be her perfect match if she has the courage to come clean with him and her hometown. Sounds really, really good. Uh, next up, we have a Harlequin historical novel. We have His Maddening Matchmaker by Virginia Heath. This is book number two in a very village scandal series. Ned Parker has spent years restoring his family's fortunes, leaving no time for courting. Now childhood friend and self-appointed matchmaker Isabel has decided to transform this scuffy brute into an eligible gentleman. Though he has no interest in rejoining society, Ned senses Izzy, needs the distraction, and reluctantly goes along with her plans. Despite their differing views, a surprising new attraction grows, but Ned's doing his best to avoid it. That sounds so cute. I love, so this one is, it says 19th century Regency. Um, like the, 
late 1800s, I think, is the time period for this one. I'm not absolutely certain. So back to those buzzword locations that I had. When I saw this one from Intrigue, I immediately went, yes, please. Uh, we have French Quarter uh, Fatale by the great Joanna Wayne. A year after her famous mother disappeared during Mardi Gras, Josette Gilleroy is back on Bourbon Street. She's looking for answers, even if that means putting herself at risk. Law enforcement failed her, which is why she pushes FBI agent Keenan Carter away until their mutual attraction makes her pull him close. She trusts him with her life, but that doesn't mean she trusts him with her heart. New Orleans. Is that New Orleans? I can't wait. I gotta read it. Yay! Uh, next we have a Harlequin medical romance, and this is Highland Fling with Her Best Friend by Becky Wicks. After a bad breakup, Dr. Sadie Mills is offered a new job at an exclusive health facility in Scotland with her best friend. It sounds like the perfect escape. Sadie's never worked with Dr. Owen Penner before, but why would that be an issue? She loves Owen and has never been tempted to date such a committed playboy. Yet suddenly she wants to shove him out of the friend zone, straight into her bed. <laughs> what happens in Scotland stays in Scotland, maybe? Maybe? Sounds delightful and adorable. Um, next up, a Presents novel by the great Claire Connolly. We have The Secret She Must Tell the Spaniard. And this is self-made billionaire, uh, Graocio, I believe is how you say it, could f couldn't forgive uh, Alicia for choosing her family over him years ago. So when he sees her time being auctioned at a charity event, he makes a winning bid. He'll whisk her away to his Spanish island and finally shake the hold she has on him. Back in his orbit, Alicia knows she must face his questions over the past, but each sultry night transforms their fiery tension, and Alicia gathers her courage to admit the truth, that after she was forced to abandon him, she had his daughter. So this is a secret child book. These are not my favorites, but I know Claire Connolly is an author that delivers the goods in terms of writing, so I think that she will do this well. Um... Yeah, and the, like the cover of this one. Like between them in the background, you see like the, the islands. Oh, it Does that not look like the ultimate destination? It looks so good. So yeah, looking forward to that one. Next up, we have Billionaire's Snowbound Marriage Reunion by Justine Lewis, a Harlequin romance novel. And this one kind of really stood out to me even, even more than the plot was the dog on the cover. <laughs> Best-selling author Lily doesn't expect to have to share her remote cabin getaway with anyone, let alone her ex-husband, billionaire Jack. She hadn't seen him since their fledgling, fledgling marriage imploded a decade ago, but her response to him is as viscular as ever. Now snowbound together, they're forced to face the truths of what came between them, rediscovering the connection that started it all. Will they seize their second ch the second chance they never dared to dream of? I kind of really, really love I, I love second chance romances, but especially when it's a married couple, because it feels like there's so much more at stake than just, you know, a relationship where they, they broke up. Like it was, they were married and had to go through the divorce. I mean, there was a lot kind of going on there, right? So yeah, this one sounds really good. Next up, we have a romantic suspense novel, Undercover Cowboy Defender by Linda O. Johnson. This is book number three of the, sh uh, book three in the Shelter of Secrets series. Say that three times fast. Canine cop Mark Martin's undercover assignment was to ensure security for an animal shelter, not fall for the new employee. But the shelter was a front to hide people in danger, and Luca and her young son certainly needed his help, or Lusa, Lucia, excuse me. With his connections, Mark confirmed the man stalking her was on the loose. How can the cowboy truly protect her without revealing his true identity or his true feelings? I love this. It just sounds so good. And I love the fact that the dog on the cover is front and center. It's like, forget the people. There's a dog. <laughs> uh, next up, we have a special edition novel, which you guys know are some of my favorites. This is Winning Her Fortune by Heatherly Bell. I adore Heatherly Bell. I love her writing, and I am really looking forward to this one. This is book number three in the Fortunes of Texas Hitting the Jackpot series. So very quick explanation, the Fortunes of Texas series is a huge long-running series that's been going on for more than 20 years. And they put out two of these mini-series every year. Um, one I think is from like January to like 
June. And then the other one's like July to December. So this is the first half of the year ones and this is the hitting the jackpot. You don't need to read these necessarily in order. I read them out of order, but you guys know that's kind of my jam. Um, but this one just sounds really good and I can't wait to get to it. So Cooper Fortune Maloney is the next best brother and he knows it. But when Alana uh, Cyril wins him in the Chatelaine, Texas bachelor auction, he doesn't mind being second choice. The flirty ranch hand has a few tricks up his denim sleeve. He sure will win her over. The surprise is on Coop, however, when he learns what lovely Alana is hiding and what she seeks. It sounds really cute. Again, Heather Lee Bell, I have not read a book by her that I didn't like. I'm a big fan of her work. I love the Fortunes of Texas series. So this one was kind of a win, 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 win. <laughs> Next up, again, we're going back to those location um, buzzwords that I love so much with a love inspired novel, His Alaskan Redemption by Heidi uh, McCollin. Crab fisherman Gus Coleman is just trying to make a living for his daughter. But when his fishing boat capsizes, he's injured and stranded in Hearts Bay, Alaska where he comes face to face with Mia Madden, his late best friend's fiance. And she helps him recover, uh, as she helps him recover, excuse me, he works hard to prove he's changed, but could Mia ever love another man who risks his life at sea? Oh, I love it, that sounds so good. I don't think I have read this author before, but I'm very, very interested. Again, takes place in Alaska, fishermen, sounds really good, doesn't it? I, I love it, I kind of really love it. And last but not least, we have a love-inspired suspense novel. This one, I have to admit, was the cover that was the creepiest of all of the ones that are coming out this month. And it also kind of has a buzzword for me, but this is a buzzword more for these kind of suspenseful novels. And that's a theme park. I know, sounds weird, right? But go with me, people, go with me. Theme Park Abduction by Patsy Conway. Look at that cover, like this abandoned theme park with this kid's like bag. Is that not creepy? Oh, I love it. There's just something about abandoned theme parks that are like uber creepy to me. So a theme park trip turns devastating when Rebecca Salmon's son is abducted. Now Rebecca must solve a series of clues planted throughout the park to receive, uh, to retrieve what the kidnappers want, but she needs help. Aided by FBI agent Jack Foster, she finds deciphering the clues is only half the battle. The real puzzle is how to survive and bring her son home. Does that not sound spectacular? Oh my gosh, I love it. It looks so, so good. There was one that I read a few years ago by Jessica Patch, Jessica R. Patch, that had like, it was another carnival one, and the cover of it was like a, cl like a clown's face where you would walk through to go into like a maze of some kind. Oh, just all the creepiness, all the creepiness. I love it. So anyway, guys, that is my list. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below or any of these books on your radar. And if they are, which ones, which ones are you guys looking forward to? Which ones do you hope I get to the most? <laughs> I do randomly pick them. So it's not like I'll be looking to see, oh, what do people really want me to read? I will be randomly picking these ones, but um, I'm excited about all of these. So be sure to check them out yourself. And until my next video, everybody, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, guys.